Hey mobsters, what's up? Good to have you back here in the Move Mob. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about the elbow. Uh, we want to make sure that as we go through a lot of front rack positions, elbow flexion, elbow extension, and now a little bit of what we're going to start to free up is some of the components that may restrict pronation and supination. So if we think of the elbow extension, we have flexion, now at the elbow pronation. So when we start our Olympic lifts, we go into pronation and we end in you know a variant of that um, pronation but we need to be able to kind of supinate open things up again in our snatch so um, a lot of intricate movement happens as we roll from here to underneath and having a lot of uh, degrees of freedom or the necessary degrees of freedom through this radius as it rolls around is pretty important so we have our peanut here we got our golf ball looking thing we're going to use both of them the first one is going to be more for that front rack position or being able to open up into this position and be able to rest kind of four fingers on the bar so for our thruster for our jerk for all of those repetitive um, type situations it's really important so we're going to put the uh the uh, peanut like so. We're gonna mash down, kind of find some business areas, but then I'm gonna just take my hand and kind of throw it into that position and start mashing down in through this area. You should find some pretty good business. Kind of scan in and out as you go. We can start to close down that ankle angle a little bit at the elbow. Uh, make sure your shoulders are pinned back as you do this so you're not doing anything silly like that that wouldn't transition. Keep it back and down as you're rolling through this. We see that that will definitely help me start to achieve a much tighter, more comfortable, um, more fluent front rack position for times when we're going above head and then trying to find that front rack position on the way down. Doing so keeps the bar over the middle of the foot so we're not torquing through the neck or shoulders or hyperextending through the back or doing all sorts of crazy compensatory things. Next thing we're going to take our golf ball here, put her down, we're going to kind of block into flexion and then, yeah, this one's easy to find. Uh, you do this and if, you know, a lot of you, and including myself, we're not elite level um, Olympic lifters, but we do understand the power components of that and want to train that for our physical being. Um, if we, we do a little bit too much of that reverse curl, we'll be this person that gets hot, gets this um, tennis type elbow or lateral epicondylitis. We worked the, the front part, which would be medial epicondylitis, but this one, yeah, for all the grip stuff that we do, it's good sometimes just come in here and clean well, clean up some of that, and as I see, I should probably spend a little bit more time here. But the whole idea is to make sure that this baby can um, pronate, supinate when it has to, go through a lot of flexion, be able to hit full extension so that we're not comp um, compensating through our body, whether that be at the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, the neck, all the way down into the back. You know, it sounds crazy that I'm throwing those all out there, but they're all, you know, uh, hot points where if we're not fully locked out in extension or we can't have that stable flexion position, something's going to give. So uh, take these seriously. Go and find these areas. Uh, see if you need to break anything up. Hopefully that improves your capability to find position in the gym.